Hej, my name is Kiki Eld and this is my colleague Inge Lachef Holmberg. We both work as advisors at the Swedish National Heritage Board in Visby. The Heritage Board is an authority sorting under the culture department of the Swedish government. In 2018, the Heritage Board got a government mandate to produce two guides to support the Swedish museums, one concerning human remains and one concerning returns. A year earlier, in 2017, a new law had been introduced in Sweden, the museum law, where the principle of arm length distance is crucial to avoid political control and po political decisions interfering with the institution's management. Therefore, it's important to stress that the support from the authorities concerning guidance on human remains was first asked for by the museums. Both assignments have been implemented in consultation with the Central State Museums and the Sami Parliament and both are aimed at the museums in Sweden. The main message for the museums is to draw up their own policies regarding human remains and return with assistance from the guides. The demand from the government is that Swedish museum practice must be exemplary from an international perspective when handling and returning human remains. That is a challenge, as there are so many good international examples. I will start with presenting the guidance for handling human remains in museum collections. In the document, we use a very broad definition of human remains. Whatever tissue or material from a human body is included, even as parts of objects, that means that bones, teeth and hair, as well as embryos and body fluids, are regarded as human remains. Human remains in Swedish museums are most commonly found in cultural property collections as archaeological finds. They sought under the Historical Environment Act. Objects made from human remains form another category at ethnographical and historical museums. Natural history collections often only contain a small amount of human remains due to selections and disposal. There has been an ongoing discussion in later years in Sweden if natural history museums should handle human remains at all. Finally, human remains are also found in anatomical collections at university museums. In the guidance, we present legal and ethical frameworks. The crucial point in the guidance is the ethical aspect of handling human remains. Decisions concerning research, display and disposal need both ethical standpoints and careful thinking. In the end, the responsibility is the individual museums. In Sweden, we have a history of unethical research on Sami individuals our indigenous people in the north. Ingela will come back to that. The main part of the document, however, is focusing on traditional collections management. I will end with mentioning the discussion held during the process writing the documents. If human remains are to be regarded as being different from ordinary museum objects or not, in this context, one could also ask if there is any difference between human remains and animal remains when it comes to collection management. I will now shortly present the other guide, Good Collections Management, Guidance for Managing the Return of Cultural Objects. In this, we provide support to museums, both for the museums choosing to initiate a return and for the museums receiving a claim. The guidance provides examples of different categories of objects that may need special attention. These may be human remains, objects stolen, confiscated 
or exported illegally, or objects acquired from a colonial context. In Sweden, we also need to look at our colonial past, which is mostly about the domestic colonization of Sápmi. Museums collections include many different objects with different origins. In some museums there are objects from indigenous people such as utility items, work of arts, and religious and ceremonial objects. Here you can see an example of, of uh, textiles, the Paracas textiles. These were used as covering from, for wrapping the dead. They are part of a repatriation from the Museum of World Culture in Sweden to Peru. Researchers and museums, as well as private individuals, have collected these objects for several hundred years. Some objects were purchased, while others were confiscated or collected by improper means. Some museum collections also include human remains from indigenous people, as the Sami. In the guidance, we emphasize that the central part of a return is the process. It is an opportunity to deepen your knowledge of an object and the history of the collection that becomes known in the event of a return case. The following fun fundamental approaches should be applied when dealing with, return with returns of objects. Respectful communication. It is important to respect the perspectives of other individuals and groups and to strive to achieve a mutual understanding of one another's opinions. Openness and transparency. To provide an open account on what collections contain and the origins of these collections is an important ele element in good collections management. In addition, openness and transparency pave the way for good dialogue between parties involved in the returning of an object. Good case management. Prompt action when dealing with cases is a fundamental element in good case management and the need of clear documentation for making the process and the decision transparent. I will now give examples of return from Swedish museums and institutions. Karolinska Institutet, a medical university, has been working actively for several years to inventory and document the medical history collection. The goal is to find out as much as possible about the collections and their origins. In this work, a number of returns have taken place, such as to New Zealand, United States, and as the pictures illustrate, a repatriation to Australia. Last year, at 2019, there was an important national repatriation in Sweden. On August 9, International Day of the World Indigenous People, the remains of 25 individuals that had been excavated in 1950 and 1951 were returned to Lycksele's old Sami cemetery. After more than 60 years, they were returned to their ori original resting place. Several stakeholders worked together on the process, which was divided into three different parts, ground opening, atonement, and ceremony. The variety of participating organizations and authorities made this a very good example of a repatriation. To conclude, we would like to stress again that for the outcome of our work and the process of producing these two guides, it has been crucial that the museums and Sami parliament have worked together with us on this. In discussions with the museums, after the guides were published, we have seen that several museums have started using this to produce their own policy documents. Further information and support documents concerning the two guides are to be found at raa.se, the Swedish National Heritage Board webpage. Thank you. <laughs>